All right, so the name of the game today is Experimentation. I'm experimenting with a new camera setup, a new mic setup. I bought a bunch of toys from Goodwill that we're gonna try to have a look at and see if we can circuit bend. I have this magic wand here, which had batteries in it and I know works. I have this whack-a-mole game. Uh, which I have not confirmed makes a sound at all. We'll have a look at that. And this keyboard here that, that we're also going to poke around with again that I haven't heard make any sound. I chose these three devices. I sort of, I did a run in, grabbed a couple things and came out. I wanted things that, that made noise. I wanted things that had their own internal speaker outside the box. I wanted things that were all battery powered so I wouldn't uh, electrocute myself when I mess around. And I also wanted things that were kind of big-ish, which means they'll probably be more to poke around with, and also cheap. I think these were all less than a dollar a piece. So just to set this one aside, we know that this is making sound, and so that's a good sign. And so we'll probably dig into this a little bit later. The first thing I want to do with these other two is put some new batteries in and see what's going on. My tools for today are very, very limited. I have two screwdrivers of different sizes, and then I have a whole stack of batteries, uh, which I, uh, double A's, which I hope are the right ones. So let's start with this one. That's making sound. That's great. We we have uh, something to play with. Boy, there are a lot of screws on this one. Uh, uh, we'll put this over to the side for a moment. But at first, we know it's making sound. A couple things that I'm thinking about here as I as I work on this is I always find it's good practice to take the batteries out. I have a Furby that I circuit bent, and uh, at the time I circuit bent it, someone told me make sure you always take the batteries out because if you forget and leave them in, they'll, they will they have the possibility to leak and break. And sure enough, my, my circuit bent Furby is now broken because of that. So just good practice to, to if I'm not using it, I'm gonna take it out. I have some circuit bent Game Boys and I certainly make sure for those that, that I'm always taking things out. All right, so that's making noise. Let's move on to this keyboard and see if this is making some sound. Whoop, that screw came out. Another thing that I'm doing is I always have a place to put screws. Again, we're just working with one screw now, but as we get more and more screws, oh, this one actually has some batteries in it. They're mismatched, which is never a good sign. But let's start by taking these out. Mm, speaking of battery leakage, there's some not so great stuff on this guy. Not sure I can get that in focus, but uh, there's that. I'm just gonna get rid of those. We need one more battery. I feel like that screw's stripped in there. On. Okay, no luck. Uh, that doesn't mean this is a total loss, but it does it doesn't put this lower on my priority of things I want to look into. A couple things to think about is I know that I've got at least a couple speakers in there. Might be some nice buttons. There might be something I can do with this this keyboard. Um, I'll open it up, but chances are this is just going to be uh, I'm going to take a few parts off of this. You know, maybe if I were ambitious, I'd use this case for something. There's something nice. It looks like it splits. In oh, that's neat. I, I don't know what the uh, portability... Well, anyway, we'll leave that be. Let's take out our batteries. I'll put this one aside for the moment. All right, to our magic wand here. So this is where my batteries are. All of the sound and light stuff is up here. 
This looks pretty small. We'll see how it goes, but let's take out these screws. And again, now we have more screws. Um, and it looks like we have to take out all of those. Uh, so I want to make sure again that I have a place to put them so I can put them back. Another thing worth mentioning if you're doing this is that I'm not doing is I often take a lot of photos of these things as I go along just to make sure I can get them back the way I want to. But since we are taking a video of this, or I should say I am taking a video of this, I'm being a little less serious about that. But again, good to take some documentation and something that you can go back to if you're having trouble getting things back together. Did I miss one? Oh, I did. All right. Okay, this is our LED with the mirrors. Since the power supply goes down there, we've got wires that go down. All right, speaker. What is this? That must be... Probably how it's detecting it's being shaken. Seems like it. Uh, I wonder, that's very interesting. Boy, if I if I screw this up, um, that's a neat little device that might be worth stealing. Uh, okay, that seems attached there somehow. Let's see if I can tease this one out. There we go. Oh, look at this. Beautiful resistors we can see. So I'm just touching it there. I haven't licked my finger or anything. We can hear the sound is getting higher. So what's happening is that somewhere around here is our clock resistor, right? The resistor that affects the timing of the clock. So by touching this, I'm creating a short circuit, right? It's, it, the voltage is able to jump across my skin better than the resistor. And so that makes the clock goes faster and hence makes the sound go faster. Ah, uh, that's pretty neat. I think it's hard for me to pull this out because, uh, because it's attached in a couple places. I think it's this guy here. It might be that guy there. The next step for me would be to get a couple alligator clips and a resistor and see if we can uh, poke around and, and see anything else. Well, let's see if there's... Okay, that's pretty neat. Let's leave this as is for the moment. We know we have some potential to do stuff in here. While we're at it, oh yeah, I better turn that off. Let's hop over to Whack-A-Mole. Okay, well, uh, I'm sure as I take out these screws, I'll switch it to like fast motion on the camera or something. I'm gonna set these aside. These are my screws for the magic wand. I'm gonna get another thing to put these screws in just so I don't mix them up. Again, I'm sure you're far more clever than I am and you wouldn't make that mistake, but why take the risk? So I'm gonna start by taking out these screws and, and seeing what this guy's made of. All right, I hope that was 
satisfying to watch in fast motion because it was pretty tedious to do in reality. <laughs> uh, these are long screws and it makes sense because this is a, a whack-a-mole game. And so in theory, kids are gonna be smashing into this. So you want it to, to be pretty sturdy. All right, speaker here. There's the interesting stuff. Let's put, I took the batteries out of this. Let's put them back in real quick. Okay, sorry friend, you doing okay? There we are. Uh, switch was here. Okay. Oh, I... Look at this little board in here. Okay, I'm going to turn you off for a second, friend. Uh, all right. Uh, I think I want to peek at what's under this. It looks like... I'm trying to see. There are little switches here that tell when the molds are whacked. Completely clear on how they work because they don't appear to touch the mold. I wonder if when this is on it, it does something different. Let me turn that on again just to check. Oh, there's a... Well, so there are two wires that go into the mold. I'm going to assume those are to light those LED hats. I think this must be how they're detecting the things going down, but I'm not completely sure I know uh, how that's working at the moment. Okay, so I got a different type of screw here. If I were better prepared, I might even um, put these in a different dish. They're so different, though, than um, the ones I've taken out that I think I'll be okay. Ooh, actually, I don't want to take out those. Those are the ones for that sensor. I want to take out the ones on the board. A couple things that... Again, why photos are good. See there are these indentations in the board and the different color wires that go through them. This will probably go back together best if I remember which wires are going through which. So I take a photo, uh, you know, I did my zoom in now so we can, okay, yes, thank you. Uh, so we can look at those. There we go. There's some, some things back here. There's a capacitor and a couple things back there. Um, but this is different. These, these are resistors here. These are surface mount resistors, right? So they're smaller. It does make it a little bit harder to clip alligator clips onto these, but we can still poke around with our hands. So again, we'll turn them on. There it is. Again, once again, I'm gonna zoom out, sorry. Uh, but that was, that was it there, uh, when I, when I touched that area. I'm shorting that out. Uh, this could be, oh, I think I'll just take that piece off. This could be particularly interesting because again, there's lots of speech in this. There's a lot more variety of sounds in this than in our in our princess wand here. Sorry, Tinkerbell wand here. And so there might be more different things. Now, the difference is you control when things play on this, right? So I can wave this and know it's gonna make a sound. This one, since it's a game, it's doing things on its own. Let's poke around a little bit. Oh, I see. Okay, so these these switches here, the the moles have a notch here, and if they're if they're not oriented right, they won't hit that switch. But the, this is set so that that'll be lined up. All right, that's pretty neat. Okay. I'm going to turn this off for a second, and then maybe I'll grab some alligator clips and we'll just see. 
Okay, so this is a 1K resistor. That doesn't really matter so much, but I just want to poke around a little bit. If I have this one resistor, then, you know, there, I mean, there's always going to be a chance that I'm going to put a voltage where it really a voltage shouldn't be, and I'm going to break it. Again, my $1 toy, I've at least made 50% of an interesting video. I mean, hopefully interesting video with it, so I'm not super stressed. But, so let's flip this to this resistor, test my theory that this is the clock. That one is not the clock. Oh, it was this one over here. In addition to the clock resistor, I'm just poking around to see if I can short circuit anything. Ooh, that's nice. On the leg of that capacitor there. So, you know, the goal might be, uh, depending on what I want to do, I could I could take this chip out, reset it in something else, and do something uh, different altogether. I kind of like this one. I like how you wave it. It seems to work nicely. It might be neat if I can somehow add buttons to the wand itself. This will involve drilling. This will involve some either soldering or wire wrap. But there seems to be some potential here. I also grabbed, I don't know if this is going to work, uh, this is this is a light-dependent resistor. Uh, I don't know, I, I need to do some more poking around with that. Currently, no pun intended, I can only... Oh gosh, I gotta remember to edit that out. Uh, the, the, I can only make this clock go faster, right? Because I can't increase the resistance by running other resistors in parallel. If I want to slow down the clock, which will lead to some of the most interesting effects, I need to cut out this resistor and replace it with something that has more resistance. So again, uh, we'll think about what we want to do with that. Let's poke around a little bit in this friend here. So uh, this one's a little bit harder. I'm pretty unsurprised by that. This board is far more complicated. Again, it's got the surface mount components, which are harder to get at. But also this board is doing a lot of things. It's got the whole game happening there. And so it's not just the sound. This wand, all it's doing is this triggers, I forgot to turn it off. This triggers a sound to happen. This, the, it's not that you hit a mole and it makes a sound. It, it does all sorts of things. A mm, little bit, a little bit more challenging, not impossible. Um, but I, I need to spend a little bit more time than I want to in, in this introduction here. Just like the keyboard, if this doesn't work for a bend, uh, it's an interesting button. You know, I, it, you can immediately see how these buttons have their wires and the LEDs too. And so if nothing else, you can make a controller out of this, put an Arduino and then have it be a, a four button controller for better or worse. Um, and so there, there's some, some potential in this too, but not in the same way that, that, that our, our Tinkerbell wand is. I'm gonna leave it there for today. We'll think about what our plans are for this one. Probably the next step is at least to make sure we're clear on what the clock resistor is, cut it out. We'll replace it with a way that we can increase the resistance beyond that to slow things down. And then we, if we want it to be variable, maybe we want to put in a potentiometer, uh, an LDR. At the very least, we should change this LED. Oops. Oh, now it's mad at me. There it goes. Because, you know, red is so typical. And, you know, maybe maybe some spray paint and stickers would also make this a lot of fun. But we'll, we'll dig into that more next time.